Hey, this is Matt Starr. Thanks for checking out Matt Starr Music on YouTube. A lot of you guys have asked me about my kit that I had on tour with Ace Frehley in 2012. This is it right here. I'm going to show you the kit top to bottom and uh, answer any questions you guys have had. All right. I have now gone from uh, subject to director, so this could get scary. Okay, so uh, let's start out with the basics, I guess. So these are vintage Ludwig shells that I restored and recovered with the help of Mark Carter uh, who worked at Creative Music in Wethersfield, Connecticut and that was a shop I went to as I was growing up and Mark is a drum guru much like Stan at Pro Drum in Hollywood. Okay so um, these are all different shells. I'll start with the kick. It's a 28. I would have preferred a 26 but um, Basically, I got word that two weeks before we headed out on tour, I needed to have a kit to stay with all of the gear. And um, I talked to Ludwig, and that was going to take a couple months for them to get me a kit. So I set out on Craigslist and making calls, and uh, which I love to do. So uh, this kick drum is a 1962. It was black diamond pearl, and half of it was all burnt from being in the window at a elementary school for many many years so um in C inside it's beautiful the white's gorgeous and um, it's 28 by 14 and so I took the covering off and we had a big old beautiful shell um, the front head on this was done by Jeff at illicit graphics um, I actually designed the artwork and I took pieces that Ace had used in his Anomaly album cover and uh, insert and just kind of reconfigured things and created this. Um, we got the ride which is mounted off of the shell, which originally I did that because it looked cool. I started doing that, you know, back when I was in my late teens, but now it just, it's really convenient and still looks awesome there's the original badge oh no where is it what are you looking at oh it's a reflection yeah these drums are trippy um there's the original badge on it for you drum nerds what is it? i can't see six one two four five one okay <clears throat> so that's that so now this rack tom is a 14 this is a granitone interior, so uh, I think that's dating it at least mid 70s. Um, this kick drum had the bow tie lugs on it, and I always love the bow tie lugs. So, what I did is um, we re drilled this, and you can see there's a ton of holes in there, and there's pencil marks as a guide. Um, this drum I got off of eBay, and um, the kick drum to finish that story, I got it off of. Uh, a guy in New York City who had gotten it from the elementary school and it was 200 bucks okay I'm proud of that um, all right so this drum I got off of eBay it was a little um, the edges weren't totally true so I put it on my parents marble countertop at their home in Connecticut and um, like I used to do when I was a kid and I lived there uh, and put a piece of sandpaper on there and then just trued it up so you know this is not a professional job <coughs> but this drum is singing um, and this, I don't know where this badge is, but that's not correct because it should be a blue and olive badge. So that is a lie. Okay. Then we go over to this floor, Tom. I've had this floor, Tom, for probably over 20 years. There's a music store in Connecticut called Melody Music, and they had a beautiful Ringo kit in there, um, 64, 65. It had two 16 by 16 floor toms, and I convinced the guy to sell me one of them. I should have just bought the whole kit, but I, you know, I didn't. So anyway, this drum has been, well, first I it was... Um, you know the uh, the Ringo finish, but then I I ripped it off using no heat gun, no nothing, and I tore the mahogany off of the side, and it's not pretty underneath there. Uh, I did it in green sparkle, and now it's been recovered in this mirror finish. Okay, and that is the original badge on that one. If you guys can see that, I think you can. Yeah. Okay. This floor tom I got from Randy Rainwater. Randy, hey. Um, 
You know, it's about the same uh, era. Now, this was painted black. He goes, I got a shell, and it's like a, it's a mid-70s Ludwig, three-ply and all that, but it's painted black. I said, I don't care. And again, we uh, had to drill the insides of these to put the bow tie lugs on there. So thank you, Randy. And this badge, too. I don't know where I got this one. One of these badges is a... Uh, Oh, right. This is not the original badge for this drum. I think this actually is the badge for this drum, but for some reason uh, it wasn't setting right or something. I don't know. So this is um, this belongs on that drum. And that, that one, this one says uh, 291322. Two. Okay. So uh, I got um, clear Aquarian response twos on my toms. That's for live. Usually I do codeds, but um, live just to get a little bit more projection. And on the bottom, I have the smooth, uh, the gloss white heads. Except for this rack tom, because the bottom head got busted. Um, not by my tech, we won't get into that. Okay, um, and then on the snare, which is a, uh, it's a black beauty. i just put a new head on there, but it's a, just a 90s black beauty. And I got, um, I had a chrome over brass hoop, and it got so out of round, it was useless um, from just being beaten on. So I just got like a generic one in the meantime, and it sounds fine. Uh, okay, so symbols. I got the, for the stands, I got all the flat base stands, and then I got a vintage uh, Ludwig stand. Right, the Hercules with that tile mount, which is gorgeous. And then that's a rims mount on there, which works great. Um, Okay, so now we got cymbals. You know, the usual suspects, 15 inch sound edge hi-hats. And I've been playing the power crashes, which are higher in pitch than the regular 2002. So I got a 19 here, I got a 20 here. I got the 24 Reverend Al ride, which is essentially a cross between a 24 inch crash and a 24 inch ride. It's really nice, breaks up great. And then this is a 22-inch China, 2002, when they reissued the classic design. I don't know if it still has. It has sort of the black logo. You can barely see it. But in 2002, they re reissued the 2002s with the black lettering like they had in the 70s. And this is a 22-inch, and it's gorgeous, and it sounds so beautiful. Because for me, a China, it doesn't really open up until you get at least to 20. But this one is so nice. And um, I asked um, the Peisty rep, Christian in uh, Switzerland if they were going to still keep making these and he said well yes Ian Pace is playing them so we must so they still make them okay um pedals you know I got the DW6000 I like the flat bass and I beat on my drums you know and um these stands don't go anywhere man they're solid and, and same thing with these flat bass stands they're great um I always have to tape down cymbal stands anyhow so um Kick drum pedal. I got the 5000. The 9 is smooth, but um, I'm happy with the 5. And I got a weight on there, too. One thing I wanted to add is, you know, the reason I talked about, you know, these edges and sanding them down myself. And, you know, this is a granitone interior. This is maple. I'm assuming that was maple. Um, this is maple, but it's actually late 60s. But that's another story. Um, you know, it just... Just get some drums, man, and, and if they sound good, cool. These drums have tons of extra holes, but you know what? From back here, they're gorgeous. And under the lights, they look amazing. They sound great. They all match. The kick drum's a little warmer because it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's mahogany rather than uh, maple inside. But, man, just get great drums and play them. Don't worry about virgin bass drum or I don't know what else. No one wants to deal with a virgin anyway, trust me. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour of my kit. Let me know if you have any more questions. I'm happy to answer them. And who knows what I'm going to be playing for the next tour for the Space Invader record, which comes out July 8th. All right, cool. See you guys.